the political leaders have put, uh, put the deadline as 2015. As you know, it was previously 2020, and uh, they have now recognized how important it is to bring forward because of the challenges that uh, ASEAN is facing. So 2015 uh, is a figure that uh, they have chosen, and uh, I think the, the governments of ASEAN are working towards uh, achieving that objective. Uh, but uh, I must say that you know we just have four more years. Uh, but looking at uh, the work that needs to be done, that still needs to be done, although some work has been done, uh, in, in, especially in the economic area, the blueprint, the action plan, and in the area of goods, I think we have achieved substantive progress. But in the area of uh, services, I think we have some way to go. And uh, in terms of investment, again, there are some important areas that we need to, I mean, the governments will need to sort out in order to make that region attractive. Uh, and then in terms of free flow of uh, skill, uh, I mean skill labor, not free flow, free flow of skill labor, uh, free flow of capital, uh, there are some aspects that need to be sorted out. So I, in all, I must say that uh, there will, in 2015, a lot of progress would have been achieved. Uh, but I'm not so sure whether we can really say that we have reached an ASEAN economic community where indeed we have ad addressed all the problems, you know, relating to the region. So, but we have to accept it that uh, this is an ASEAN way of doing it and uh, perhaps, you know, uh, 2015 is not going to be the end, you know? there will be still a lot of new initiatives and uh, work on new initiatives that will be carried out. Uh, yes. So, in your opinion, how can we get the private sectors to engage in ASEAN's process of community building? I think this is a very, very uh, you know, important question, I must say, because I'm one of those who have strongly advocated that you cannot get the economic action plan uh, effectively implemented if there is no conduit or channel where the private sector is able to interact with the bureaucrats, the policy makers, on a systematic and regular basis. And uh, I think it's important that we have a, a structured uh, channel of communication between the private sector and the policy makers. Right now, as you know, uh, there is the existence of ASEAN CCCI, which has been there for many, many years. And uh, I personally do not find that structure effective in uh, getting uh, appropriate feedback, inputs, ideas you know, from the private sector that can be channeled to the uh, economic ministers as well as to the leaders. So I would like to strongly advocate that uh, we relook at how the private sector and the, uh, and the bureaucrat and then the policy makers uh, could interact more on a, on, a, on a systematic, regular basis with a formal structure where there will be a continuous flow of ideas and feedback coming from the, uh, feed, uh, from the private sector to the governments of ASEAN. I think uh, this has not been done. Uh, we have, of course, also the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, but uh, this comprise representatives. They are all business people. Yes, they are trying their best to, to see what can be done within ASEAN. But I, I see that the ASEAN Business Advisory Council comprise individuals uh, who I'm not so sure whether they have that interaction with their own uh, business community in the respective countries. Uh, you know, that, where they can get a common position and relate back to ASEAN. And uh, likewise, when they have attended meetings, for example, what issues have come up and what needs to be done, you know, as also need to be reported back or there need to be a dialogue with the industries, you know, to get their feedback. Yeah, so the, I think it's important that there is that uh, effective communication channels established. So for that reason, I believe the ABAC can function as it is, uh, but I think we need to look at uh, the ASEAN CCCI, how it can be, uh, re it should be reviewed, how it can be streamlined, how we can make it more effective with proper you know, uh, working groups or task forces specializing in uh, specific sectors. So that when you talk about integrating sectors, you know, or having a sector that is free from trade, not barriers, what have you, there has to be a continuous exercise and uh, I think the private sector is the one that will be able to, to guide you know, the policy makers to make improvements in this area of which I, I, I must say in all sincerity is not, it's not being, yeah? it's not the way it is being done now.